to what we call the political point. Now, Michelle Ngele is going to be driving this conversation. And today, well, just a reminder that uh, we do know that NASA made a declaration and said that should the High Court, uh, the Supreme Court, rule against uh, the vote tallying being done from uh, the uh, county, uh, or rather from the constituency level, they would not be going to the polls. What does that mean? Let me hand over now to Michelle Ngele. Michelle, over to you. Thank you, Michael. And that contention is actually at uh, the Court of Appeal where IBC has now filed a petition uh, against the reversal, uh, or, or looking for the reversal, rather, of the High Court decision that declared as final presidential results announced at the constituency level. That is a conversation we will be continuing here in the studio. But first, my panelists now, uh, to my immediate right, a political analyst, Evans Wafu, Professor Ori Tumbo, many thanks for joining us on Morning Express. And we're also joined by uh, Peter Ongonga and uh, Moses Oburu, both from the NASA champions. And gentlemen, uh, many thanks for joining us on Morning Express. I'd like us to begin with uh, Moses uh, talking to us about the mandate of NASA champions. We haven't heard of this before. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we had a political formation that was, uh, was launched the other day. And... Uh, uh, we are going to a campaign, and we must get our our people to come out and vote. You know, we must get our vote. We must explain the, our parties, our coalitions uh, uh, manifesto to the people, so that uh, we can get our people to vote out this toxic uh, regime. Mm -hmm. You know, so our mandate is basically to rally the country around our, our, the Pentagon and our presidential candidate. Right. Yes. Um, Peter, anything you can add to that? Yes. Um, NASA champions, it is, a, it is a, a, a political wing of uh, the larger NASA, and specifically it's uh, made of young tax and also professionals who are very tired of this toxic uh, government, Jubilee government, mm -hmm. and the people who are very determined to make it in life. Right. Yes. All right, so let's begin then um, talking about the rally that we saw this weekend, all the core principles there. And uh, one of the things that came out most is that threat by NASA now to possibly quit the August 8th general elections. If that decision by the High Court that declared as final presidential results at the constituency level is reversed. Now, there's been a spur of reactions from this, all the way from IABC, saying that this is an act of intimidation of independent institutions in the country. Evans, let's begin with with you and your thoughts on that threat, first of all? I think uh, it's the quest of every Kenyan that we have clean and decent elections. Yeah. And I think uh, what uh, is coming from NASA is an indication that uh, we have a problem in our electoral system. And actually, probably they are trying to raise their voice that uh, we need to put our house in order before we go into the general election. It's, it's important to note that uh, going to an election is, 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 is just one event that takes place. But the process, the electoral process itself begins a long time ago, from re registering voters to preparing the voter registrar and also to participating in that election. And I think uh, uh, what we know, the ruling of the court, uh, that actually was very clear. It was clearly pronounced. I think what the, uh, the IBC is doing is just seeking an interpretation of this ruling. Mm -hmm. And I think we don't need to make a lot of noise about just a court interpretation on the ruling. Uh, because at the end of the day, what will happen is that uh, whether the decision of the uh, previous court is going to be resented is another thing. But mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day is that what Kenyans want to see is clean elections, a very free and fair election, and right. an environment that will actually allow our election to have legitimacy and uh, actually the legality. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not quite sure that IABC really is seeking an interpretation because uh, Chabukati has remained very clear that they are looking to have this overturned and that is what their petition is about at, at the Court of Appeal. And he makes it very clear, Professor uh, Tumbo, that this, uh, you know, this threat, uh, first of all, of the very fact that uh, the High Court had declared as final those results at the constitu const constituency level is a recipe for chaos. Why, why is that? Thank you, Phil. I am hopeful that we will not go um, the whole hog to actualize uh, the threat. Secondly, I would like to um, say that it's unfortunate because it appears more or less that uh, places like the courts are now uh, really considerably threatened by this particular declaration, because it's like, if we don't make the decision our way, 
Then we are then, going here, we are going to protest. Then we are going to protest. Now, um, I just hope it's a negotiating position and not an actual terminal uh, position mm -hmm. for the opposition. Two, I think that um, it's extremely important that um, uh, the political players do not raise temperatures the way NASA has done. Now, uh, they may have a point, but I'm wondering, and there are other ways to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Because to me, uh, this particular threat raises the tempo of the competition mm -hmm. to almost a dangerous level. In fact, during that same rally, uh, Kalonzo Musioka, a wife and leader, urged residents of Nakuru that should this uh, court ruling not be in our favor, then are you ready to go out to the streets and protest? And they've actually said that there will be a string of protests across the country if that ruling is not in their favor. So, Peter, just uh, taking up from what Professor uh, Oritumbo says, is, isn't that a bit too extreme? Because all political parties say they're trying to have free and fair elections, but this seems uh, literally incitement of the youth. Um, okay, this, this election is a high volatile. It's high volatile because this election, there's uh, less probability that we will go for a rerun. Meaning that from the first round we are doing this election, you win, you win, you lose, you lose. And therefore, the stakes are too high. Very true. And again, uh, talking about uh, uh, returning officers, Actually, the main contention is who should, who should announce what. Now, a returning officer at the constituency level is mandated to announce from, you know, the ward, uh, whoever has won at the ward as MCA, mm. whoever has won as MP, is supposed also to announce whoever has won in that constituency for Senate and for governor and also for president. Mm. And the issue, uh, if, we are not, if we are not so blind, uh, 2013 and 2007, where this problem whereby the results that have been announced down there are not withheld up here. And along the way, something happens and the figures change. Uh, we end up having, you know, turnout of almost 120 percent, 105 percent. Mm. And therefore, as NASA, what we are saying is whatever is declared at the constituency level as now the presidential vote, it does not matter whether it favors NASA or it favors Jubilee, but it should be upheld. It I mean, should be upheld. Isn't that why NASA is championing for a parallel tallying center? Moses, uh, NASA wants a parallel tallying center. NASA wants results uh, final at the constituency level. How are these two going to work together? Um, <clears throat> first of all, to buttress his point, uh, you see, the... the the presiding officer and the returning officer at the constituency level are the ones who man the actual voting that took place. They have the actual figures. They monitored. We have both, both parties, both sides, or any other candidate has, uh, has agents. So they can verify and, and, and actu actually confirm that these are the actual uh, 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 votes that were cast. And therefore, the announcement there, thereafter reflects the reality. And I don't see why, why there should be a problem with, with, with IBC uh, going by the ruling of the court that the results must be announced at the, at the, at the constituency level. Mm -hmm. And therefore, just uh, and confirming, you know, uh, the chairman confirming just what, uh, what was announced as the actual figure. Right, I mean, so I if IBC wanted to, to, to change this, then they should engage all the stakeholders and explain their their actual reason why mm. they want this changed, not just rushing into court. You know. right, I mean, we now read, we read uh, mischief. Professor, yeah, even actually, before you uh, jump on that, we, Ch Chabukase has already said that he is the national, uh, you know, tally, returning officer, so to speak, so he should be the one mandated well, uh, to, to announce the final well, results. But well, let's hear from I Professor Tumbo before I, I, come I to think you. There, there are two major issues here. First, what is the point of dispute? Mm -hmm. The uh, opposition is actually alleging that the, the, elect, the previous two elections have not been won at the ballot box. They have been won during transmission of to results. the telling center. That, that is the first, uh, the first point of contention. The second point of contention that needs to come out is this. Um, the Electoral Commission has not been able to deny, all right, that that was not the position. Mm -hmm. Now, and uh, the, as a result, I, 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 when they have not been able to deny that they believe this process was not responsible for the, um, 
uh, what you might call disputed outcome, then they should, they should be able to explain quite clearly that along the line, the, the opportunities for alteration of results, mm -hmm. all right, will be minimized this way, this way, this way. Now, once you implement a regulation or a law twice and it is the, the outcome is in dispute, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's your obligation to make sure you take corrective action. All right. Now, corrective action in this case for Jebukati doesn't mean reversing that one. It's simply first to try and hold discussions with the contenders that actually uh, what you are saying is a problem is not a problem mm -hmm. at all. But how did we get here, uh, Evans? Because m many would argue that it was the same opposition that asked for a reconstitution of uh, the IABC commissioners. And now we're finding ourselves at a position where that entire process of reconstitution that saw the death or the loss of five lives uh, is seemingly null and void because we're now still not having any trust in the IABC. Actually, what I consider is that our democracy is still very young. We are still in the transition. And one of the most important things uh, to note is that, uh, for example, the practice of parallel turning mm -hmm. is not very new in uh, developed democracies. And what I think from the meeting uh, NASA had with IABC some, some while ago is that uh, they agreed that uh, they can have parallel turning, but the declaration of the results is what they're actually contesting, who will declare the, the result. But I think uh, we've seen in the United States, we've seen many places, even here in Kenya, we've seen parallel tiling, mm -hmm. where uh, political parties from various uh, 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 election headquarters or election points have been carrying out their, their tiling. So I don't look at that as a, as a major problem. But I agree with the professor. Is I think uh, we are actually in a critical moment. Mm -hmm. we, we are in a moment of uh, we'll either do or break this election. Right. And I think uh, what needs to happen in all the political players, including the IBC, need to get in a sort of dialogue and be able to iron out these contagious issues before we actually uh, go to the election. Because mm -hmm. looking at the political temperatures, where now the politicians have even taken up the show from the, from the courts. Right. We will hear the opposition, the, both the, the, the ruling co coalition, I mean the jubilee and also the opposition all of them are grandstanding. And I think this is dangerous for the election process. Mm -hmm. And especially from the rallies we are seeing. People are whipping out uh, emotions. And I think at the end of the day, what will happen is that we should not also take these threats from NASA uh, lightly. And then uh, I've, I've seen politicians actually saying that uh, we will go to the election with or without a, a very major player in the election. In I the think, it, yeah, in the ballot. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important that uh, every, the emotions to come down and I think the IBC should initiate a dialogue. All right. Um, let's bring in constitutional lawyer Harrison Kenyanjoy who joins us by way of phone. Uh, Harrison, many thanks for joining us on Morning Express. Our discussion now is on this threat by NASA to possibly boycott the elections if the Court of Appeal does not rule in their favor in matters of presidential results being announced at the constituency level. Your thoughts on this? Thank you. Now, um, I don't think anyone should be commenting about this judgment without first having a read at it. Unless you have read it, do not comment about it. Now, I have to say three things. This idea of one, two, or three judges sitting in a courtroom to listen to a few individuals and then overturning laws that have been passed by Parliament, I think this has to stop. Now, when you look at this judgment, in paragraph 65, these judges say it, and I quote them, the Commission has no power to verify or confirm the results declared by the constituency returning officer. End of quote. This is unconstitutional. Any lawyer or any person independent of the court will look at Article 138, sub Article 3C. It says very clearly that the Commission will verify and tally and declare the presidential election results. So where did the judges get this from? But in my view, as long as you have foreign-funded so-called civil society groups and their acolytes, then you will have these sort of things happening. So I think the second issue that should come from that <clears throat> excuse me, is that uh, when you have a case of this nature, you should have the, uh, the public being invited for uh, public participation because you need to know, you as a citizen, exactly how the court will declare your position. They only approach it from the civil society perspective. Now, let me say this. With respect, these judges appear completely lost as to the meaning of provisional results. 
and they ended up making a mess of the elections law. Let me use an example. When you have 100 polling stations and the results are trickling in, they are provisional until the final polling station result is tallied. Then the verification process begins before the final result is made. So I don't understand if that is rocket science. Now, since presidential election, uh, retiring officer is the IEBC chair. As a result, trickle in progressively from all the constituencies. They are provisional until the last constituency of the 290 submit is results, which are then tallied and verified. What is wrong with this? Why couldn't the judges see this? They adopted a narrow, restricted perspective. So I think Article 86 of the Constitution should have been the starting point because it outlines the requirements of any national election. The voting must be simple, accurate, verifiable, secure, and accountable. That is a bedrock of a free and fair election. Now, so what happens when the polling clerks make mistakes, deliberate or otherwise, inadvertent? This ruling, as it stands, implies that false results, and I repeat, false inaccurate and totally unverifiable results will be announced as a basis of announcing a particular presidential candidate as a winner. So what do you have? Chaos. So the national chairman of the IEBC should be the one to receive those results and they are tallied and verified. What if a polling clerk says that from this polling station you have 4,000 votes for a presidential candidate when the registered voters are 2,000? This oh. judgment says that that result of 4,000 is final. Shut your mouth and you go to the Supreme Court if you have any questions. All right. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Harrison Kenyandri there. He is a constitutional lawyer. And uh, we'll still be coming back to you, Harrison. Do stay online. But, gentlemen, um, very interesting uh, sentiments there. So clearly, according to Harrison, this is unconstitutional. He says if this is done, if this is upheld, then we will have unverifiable, uh, probably inaccurate results being announced as the final results. But then we're finding ourselves in a catch-22 situation. And I'd like to come to you, Moses, because um, from the NASA rally, this weekend. NASA says if uh, the court ruling is overturned, then that will not be their election. It will be Jubilee's election. Jubilee, on the other hand, says if results are done at the constitutional level, then that will be uh, NASA's election to, to rig and, and win, so to speak. So how do we get out of this situation, Moses? Well, <clears throat> the most important thing I picked from, uh, from Kinyanjui is seeking consensus. By having all the stakeholders together, and, 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 having, and having consensus, having an agreement. I, Chebukati and his team should be able to explain to the, to the, to the players in this election, as important, a very important election, how he intends to do all that he wants to do, verifying and tell, you know, we want clear, clear, we want clear explanation. You know, when it, once, once he does that, then all players, Jubilee and NASA, will, have a, will take a common ground. And we go into this election as, as, as Kenya, mm -hmm. not as fragmented uh, sides. So the most important thing, and you should do this as, as soon as yesterday, call a stakeholders uh, uh, session, let people sit down, let him uh, present his, uh, do his presentation, let, let people uh, interrogate it, and let, us, let Kenyans see how, how, how prepared he is to do what he says he wants to do, mm -hmm. so that we don't go back into the past. Because once beaten, twice shy, and you know what has happened in this country previously. Elections have been sources of divisions in this country. We don't need to do that. Right. We just need clear clear pathways. And we've seen, uh, we've seen the electoral body previously also be in, in, in the very middle of, of, the, of that conflict. But Professor <laughs> Tumbo, yeah. uh, let's talk about what... Kenyans would expect of the IEBC because a lot of fingers are being pointed at the IEBC. Uh, we have just about 83 days to the election. A lot still lies uh, in, in the entry that, that is yet to be done. But in terms of assuring political parties as well as Kenyans that really we're going to carry out a free and fair election because the bigger perception is that uh, IEBC is affiliated with the ruling government. How can IEBC stomp that authority? Actually, uh, looking at uh, IEBC's um, court, um, I mean, they are having gone to court, confused the situation in the sense that consultations should have been held between the stakeholders and IBC to deal with that matter. When that fails, if that fails to yield a consensus, then it will be important to say, now let us look for an independent arbiter to give us 
an answer. Mm -hmm. Now, so IBC, in my view, put the cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. Two, if you look at the expectations of the citizen, the citizen on their own wouldn't really be bothered by and large whether it is NASA or Jubilee that wins. Mm -hmm. What they want is service delivery. And what the ex uh, citizen expects that both NASA and, and uh, Jubilee uh, subscribe to fair play. Fair play, in other words, is everybody um, satisfied with the outcome of what happens. So the, the citizen is not actually part of this dispute. Mm -hmm. The citizen is simply a platform on which the dispute is being played. Three, there is a very interesting thing. When, when uh, the court first pronounced itself on uh, that the vote should be uh, announced at the constituency level, you didn't hear, I didn't hear a lot of noise from Jubilee that this is going to be unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. It's only after the, the IBC has gone to court that Jubilee became a player. That by itself created a suspicion that Jubilee is an accomplice to this IBC action. Mm -hmm. What I would have expected, if this thing was going to be a disadvantage to Jubilee, mm -hmm. I expected them immediately to stand up and say, look, this thing is going to spoil our game plan. Right. But they didn't. So in terms of political strategy, they decided that if you come out here, or they may have decided, you come out here, you may be exposed as an accomplice to this particular thing. Mm -hmm. So what is really at play, Michelle, is uh, suspicion. Uh, and in my view, the, the IBC needs to take a step back and, uh, uh, and say, look, uh, if you think that we are playing on one side of, of the game, mm -hmm. uh, let's meet together. Let's, let's and, and, and iron this out. Yes. But let's focus on the fact that suspicion isn't a good thing to have at this stage of the electoral process. It's, it's, it's a very uh, volatile stage to be at. And even as the IBC, as you said, Professor Tumbo, needs to take a step back and reevaluate its approach to this whole thing. We also have political parties who being very key players and key stakeholders in this. Um, Wafula, talk, about, talk to us about the manner in which uh, NASA has handled this, because we're seeing a lot of threats of not just boycotting the election, but asking the supporters to also go out on the streets and protest. And and, you know, in this protest, we've seen a lot of uh, violence, we've seen a lot of lives being lost, even with the IBC protests. Um, just before the nominations, we saw a lot of this. And we're trying to avoid violence. We're trying to ensure that there is peace. Are political parties, especially NASA, approaching this the right way? I, I think I want first to just go to my first point when I talked about the court interpretation. Listening to what uh, lawyer Kinyanjui has been talking about, you then, then tend to, be, to understand that... Uh, uh, what, is, what needs to happen from the court is, because we know the chairman of the IBC delegates also his powers to the constituency level, to the returning officers. Mm -hmm. And when he talks that it is the chairman who is supposed to declare, what about the, 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 the returning officers who have actually employees and actually seconded there by the chairman? So that's also a very something that we need interpretation to know. Are they... Uh, declaring this result on behalf of the chairman. Mm -hmm. That's one thing we need to understand. But one thing uh, important is that the credibility of this election squarely stands on, on the manner in which the IBC will conduct itself. It's not how the political parties will conduct themselves. Mm -hmm. It is squarely on how the IBC is going to conduct itself. And I think they have an opportunity now because of the, the, the kind of what we've seen uh, in the past, we've seen even in, the, in, in, the, in parliament, some laws being uh, subverted because just to give way for, 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 I mean, the election process began a long time ago, as I said. Right. We saw parliamentarians coming into law, discussing about the manual tiling, the manual, all these kind of manner of things. Mm -hmm. Now we are, we are already now in court. And I think what we need to do as a, as a nation and as people preparing this election, as we all of us agree is that we need to dialogue. Political parties especially need to actually send out a message, very clear message to the people to participate in elections, but also to ensure that they do not uh, with emotions, because I, I know what has happened in what happened in Nakuru was a very strong statement, mm -hmm. and I think uh, the role of the youth in this election is also very critical. I think the youth need to understand that uh, uh, their participation in the youth, in, in the election no, does not necessarily mean. Uh, some kind of psychophancy support to their political parties, but agitate for a free and fair process. Right. Uh, Michelle, right. Michelle, there's a point I want to make. 
there appears to be a subjective interpretation of what appears to be justice. Yes. You know, one party does Has something. Their own interpretation. Yeah, everybody seems to have their own interpretation. Yeah. In my view, uh, one of the things that Chebukati should be looking at is a unanimous understanding, interpretation, and implementation of those aspects of the uh, electoral process that are likely to continue to generate suspicion. Mm -hmm. Unless this is done, I think even if people go to a negotiation a nego negotiating table with extreme positions, with no intention, no goodwill, to, all right, to come to a consensus, to come to consensus, then I think Chebukati needs to sit down with his team and relook at their uh, practical approach. All right, Moses, is NASA being a part of the NASA champions? Is NASA willing and ready for a consensus? Of course, like yesterday, uh, we want. We want best practice. We want good manners in the election. We want it done well, you know, and uh, it can only be done well if we stake out our claim to best practice. So we, we uh, our principles are, are very much in order to, to issue the threat they issued because in this country, if you don't stand out and, and, and uh, claim your rightful uh, place, then you're ignored. And secondly, I want to correct pro pro Professor with due respect is my teacher. Uh, but tell him that Kenyans, the common man, the citizens are all stakeholders in these elections. Mm -hmm. We are all, we want it done right. And if you go to the street, you'll find Wanjiku out there who wants these elections done right so that she's not, she's not a victim of the tensions that are building up. Right. And these tensions can be avoided and must be avoided. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, I'd like to move on uh, from this, but uh, Peter, let's get your final thoughts on this, and especially um, also just bringing in what we saw in the political party primaries and the issue of returning officers. We had returning officers and their deputies announcing different results for one candidate at the same polling station. We had cases of returning officers being threatened, uh, death threats, returning officers disappearing. Uh, is uh, you know, The presidential uh, election, very high stakes election. What are the chances that will not happen at the constituency level? When you look at this election, um, the common person has spoken. Look at the primaries, they want a completely free and fair process. And that's the bare minimum what even NASA we are asking for. Uh, that we want a free and fair election. We lose fairly, we are we, we okay with that. And uh, talking about that, this election in the past, uh, in 2013, Jubilee were very, very proud and said they had a uh, terrain of numbers. And I still think that they should be the people who should be championing what we are championing for, a completely free and fair election, because they have terrain of numbers, then they will win. But if I to you know, whatever is happening today, it shows that even that terrain of numbers was just a myth. And therefore, uh, NASA, we are championing for that, and what we are simply telling Chebukati is simple. That, you know, he's a referee. If you want to change the lineman from one side to another, let all teams know why you are changing that lineman, whether it's left-handed or right-handed. Mm -hmm. You don't change a lineman without really explaining to the, to the teams. And these high-valuable teams, all, both teams must understand. You cannot be talking to one team and not talking to the other. So consultation is just part of the process of this process. You, uh, if at all you will open up to, to consultation, bring in political parties, bring in uh, civil societies, bring in all concerned parties, observers and all that, then everybody is on board and you explain how you want to do this and you have a few agreements here and there. Mm -hmm. And in case there's a, a challenge, then I support what uh, Prof was saying, that then now we, we, get, we get to go to a final arbiter. The court will have been the last resort, not as like first priority, no. So uh, this election is high stake, and I think we stick on what you said. Mm -hmm. All what right, suggests, uh, Professor. What it suggests clearly that the, the outcome is likely to be very close. It's a very strongly contested election. Mm -hmm. So nobody, none of the parties, is leaving anything to chance. They are simply saying, uh, you know, in, in the politics, very often, when somebody is talking about justice, he's talking about an advantage. He's not talking about justice as is usually interpreted. Mm -hmm. They are seeking that little edge that will enable them to go fast over the line. Of course. And it is a subjective, uh, that's what I was going to say to my friend here, it's very often subjective interpretation of the rules and regulations as long as 
they, it works they, in their favor. In their favor. And that is across the political divide. But I'd like to pick your mind on something that even said earlier, that uh, the, manner in, the outcome of this election will not largely depend on the manner in which political parties conduct themselves, but largely on the manner in which IBC conducts themselves. Do you agree with that? Because um, even just looking at the nominations, uh, the manner in which those were conducted, political parties seemed to not have a grasp of what's happening. You see, political parties in Kenya are, all have bad manners, all of them, bad political manners. They, 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 they ask for justice from other people, but they, they themselves really don't practice it. Now, the way forward for them is that the IBC should require them certain minimum um, um, thresholds for them to achieve uh, as a way of saying, look, if you want us to reach consensus on this particular point, you also tied up this, tied up this, and come back with a clean slate. Mm -hmm. Now, these guys are tying their supporters' hands behind their backs, and they are demanding that the people they are competing with, or the referee says, uh, release, the, you know, uh, no, they want to tie the hands of the referee, but they have tied the hands of Moses, them. Moses wants I to respond to that, that too. <laughs> Professor. <laughs> Professor, I'm a member of uh, my party's election board, Amani National Congress, and we put out, we put, uh, put forth serious structures and systems. But you see, the players themselves are not used to systems and players. They're, they're not used to, they're not used to playing it clean. So the players will try as much as possible to subvert the system and just disorganize the whole arrangement. So you don't blame it on the parties per se, but. I think, and, and also being new, it's a new law. You know, previously we didn't have a, uh, our elections law was, was rather, rather, rather inept. Mm -hmm. But now, now that with the, we, as we, as we, in, in, as we, uh, the, we now uh, run our new constitution, we now have election laws that now require, require uh, parties to conduct nominations. I think this is where the country needs to invest uh, training, uh, training the, the entire, the entire uh, participants because Players themselves don't believe in, in clean nominations. Right, so it's not just the opposition hitting yeah. out a Jubilee administration for poor claims of breaking, but it, it's also happening within the opposition. But um, I'd like us to move away from this, because assuming that the IBC does get its house in order and does assure Kenyans of a free and fair election, NASA wants 10 million votes uh, in uh, this presidential election, or is it slightly higher than that? Uh, Peter, l let me come to you. Uh, those votes will only come uh, from NASA appealing to the electorate and the manner in which they're doing that. But there's a lot of criticism that uh, NASA uh, just copy-pasted Jubilee's manifesto uh, and came out and said these are the issues that we're going to run with. A lot of criticism that Kenyans still don't know what NASA is running on. In this rally this weekend, we still had the issues of the Unga revolution uh, pointing out at the ills of the Jubilee administration and saying they're going to make those right. But what is NASA really running on? Yeah, before, before NASA, okay, when NASA government is elected and before any, 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 you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, any move forward with, the, with our own, with our own vision and our own dreams of the, of the country and all that. There are so many, this country is, is, is intoxicated with, the, with, with a lot of jubilee mistakes. Number one, you look at the, the cost of living is very, is very high. The price of hunger is very high. And they are doing a lot of plastic surgery, almost all over. Sugar, it, it, the industry is going. The industry is going down. You look at uh, basic commodities. The price of, of even a house is actually going up. Now, this is an actual definition of a high inflation, which affects a common person. That your income remains how it was, but then the cost of living is going up. Yeah, and the question is, how are you going to bring it down? Uh, you know, that, uh, is, that, that, that is a bigger question uh, Kenyans want to ask, uh, because you're pointing out at the problems that Jubilee has, yes, and, 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 and then what? Michelle, Michelle, governance. You know, governance, just make sure that corruption is stopped, make sure that you're not borrowing to fill people's pockets, make sure that you're not, you are not, you are not, uh, you are not mismanaging uh, your country's investments, 
Make sure that uh, you get the right people to do the, the right jobs. That's all. all right. come on. Uh, I I I'll, I'll come to you in just a moment, yeah. gentlemen, yeah. for your closing yeah. comments. Let's yeah. hear from uh, Harrison Kenyanjuri. Harrison, uh, many thanks for staying on the line. Let's have your closing comments on this in terms of the way forward in uh, the court ruling. Uh, we'll be pitting IBC uh, against the opposition outfit, NASA, and also the manner in which these political parties are articulating the issues to the electorate. Thank you very much. Now, the basic presumption this judgment made is that the polling clubs are honest through and through, and that there will be no mistakes at all in the announcement of election results at the presidential level. Now, experience has taught us otherwise. We seem not to have ever learned that lesson. In my view, seeing a clear window and a stamp of approval to steal elections through this judgment, there is a political win. Clearly banking on staffing their Form 35, Form 36, Form 37, and Form 38 with the inaccurate vote results, which can only be questioned, according to this judgment, in the Supreme Court once their candidate has been declared president. Now, that will be through false results. The result, my friends, is not hard to contemplate, one of chaos, mistrust, and unfounded accusations of a stolen election. Ooh la la. We have gone around a full cycle back to 2007. This is the recipe for uh, chaos. And this crazy judgment, I'm sorry to say, has been cooking a very uh, spoiled uh, broth and will be served with it on August 10th, 10th, mark you 10th, two days after the election. It is a poisoned chalice. So the Court of Appeal has the opportunity to undo this damage. I urge even your panelists to have a look when they leave your panel at Article 138.3c of the Constitution. The High Court appeared never to have applied its mind to it. The IEBC has the obligation in a presidential election to verify and tally those results. What is the meaning of verification? I didn't say that. I leave it to you and your viewers to make a judgment about whether that was correct or not. If you have false results emanating from polling stations, and you can imagine, in the stronghold where there are no agents from the other side no one to watch as it were to supervise the objectivity of the results. The ballots will be stuffed. What oh. do we have? Someone saying, I'll not go to the election if I'll not have that opportunity. That is wrong. All right. Thank you so much, Harrison Kinyanjui there. Joining us by way of phone, he is a constitutional lawyer. Joining us on our conversation at this point, we'd like to upload our home channel viewers watching us on KTN Home. Many thanks for staying with us here on Morning Express. Life and Style is coming up next. But if you want to keep on with this conversation, we'll be continuing right now on KTN News. Thank you very much. All right, gentlemen, let's, let's also get your final comments. And uh, Harrison Kenyanjui remains uh, hard on his stance. IBC is the only body mandated to verify and announce um, the final results, especially the presidential results. But, Professor, your final thoughts on this? Um, I think there, is, there, there are two points I want to make. Um, verification can be done at the constituency level, uh -huh. since the officer conducting that exercise is acting on delegated authority of the, the, the chairman of the commission. Right. He can't have other things that are valid, and this particular action becomes invalid. Uh -huh. In my opinion, the interpretation my, uh, our distinguished uh, constitutional lawyer friend is having is, is well and fine. I have no quarrel with it. What I am thinking about, what is the practicality of some of these things? Two, there is an important point I want to make before I finish. This in relation to NASA. The question you asked, in my view, they should be saying, we will, if they are criticizing Jubilee on corruption, uh -huh. they should be saying, we will ensure that anybody involved in corrupt practices will be dealt with like this, like this. Right. If it is a question of stealing public funds, we will ensure that anybody involved in stealing public funds will like Then at the campaign level, then they explain the process, how they intend to do it. Mm -hmm. But to keep, to keep dodging, dodging the question, to me, suggests very strongly that the desire is simply to change uh, uh, eating positions. 
that once I get there, I'll do exactly what they are doing. Uh, actually, but, during the last rally, I think uh, it was Musali Amadavid telling Jubilee, you, you keep eating your meat, give us the ugali, but we'll come for your meat later on. So it really is, uh, you know, just exchanging the palate, yes, so to speak. Ivan, yes. uh, let's have your final thoughts on this. I think uh, our politics is the way it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, most political parties lack ideologies. I mean, there's no clear, uh, even their manifestos are very conflicted. So we are in, a situa in an environment of very conflicted politics. I think the IBC needs to give guidance, especially when you even talk about Chapter 6, for example. Why are we going to court about telling? But we, uh, at the same time, we have, pres uh, we have actually supervised rogue uh, politicians coming on the scene, mm -hmm. people with very tainted credibility. We are allowing these people to come to the scene, and the IBC is actually supervising that. So I think we need to depart from this uh, politics of uh, decision, uh, uh, where we are not honest about ourselves. But importantly, also see the way the, the political parties are even conducting themselves when they are in the IALA, where even I think IBC needs also to rein in and give some guidance, because uh, political parties are operating within their own spaces. Mm -hmm. And then you see other political parties coming to object them when they're operating within their own spaces. There was no problem, for example, NASA uh, proposing Kalonzo's son, then Jubilee coming saying it's not, our politics is just the way it is. It is so hypocritical, it is a, a politics that is so divisive, mm -hmm. and I think we need actually to mature politically. And I think, uh, as we all agree, that our, our, trans, our transition, demo, our democratic transition is actually step by step, and I think we will get there. Right, we uh, shouldn't lose hope Peter, now. Peter, even as uh, we wait to see how this uh, court issue will be ironed out uh, in terms of the presidential results, uh, talk about issue-based politics, because being part of the NASA champions, your mandate is to go down and break down NASA as manifesto to the grassroots. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't know if I could ask you to name just three things off the top of your mind that NASA is running on that the person on the grassroots can identify with. One, we are looking at, at corruption that is really eating into this country. We are borrowing so much, and all the borrowed money is going to people's pockets. We are looking at the cost of living. The cost of living is up on, on the roof. I don't need to explain about that. We are looking at the, the status of the economy. The status of the economy is ailing. We can't have, you can't give somebody electricity and does not have food to eat. It does not even have a shilling to pay that for the bill. So, and uh, back to IBC, back to IBC, what you are simply saying as NASA, and as now NASA champions, that IBC is a, is a referee. And you don't continuously give, you know, vantage fouls to the opponent. And you expect us to just keep quiet. We just can't keep what. When you give those fouls, we must know those fouls are meant for what. Because every time you are giving those fouls and there's so advantage to the opponent, then we must, we must rise up. We are asking for the bare minimum, completely bare minimum, that we don't, we don't want a favor. We simply need a free and fair um, uh, election. And talking about that, about the NASA message, we are going to break it down as NASA champions. We are going to chew it down for the, for the common monarchy. We are going to have serious and serious outreach to all, to all media and equally to, 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 to the rest of the country. Tell them exactly what, as NASA, we are going to, to change into their lives. And we want in the next 100 days after we take over this government that uh, on the minimum, the cost of living should have come down. On the minimum, the cost of living should have come down. This thing is, is actually unbearable. All right, all right. Uh, lots of promises being made there. Moses, let's have your final parting shot. Is this free and fair election achievable in just 83 days? It is. It is achievable because we've covered so much ground in terms of having it, having it uh, 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 done. Mm -hmm. So what is remaining is this contentious issue that Chebukat is coming up with. I mean, uh, just to... Uh, to Co to correct Kenyanjui, I mean, there's, there's a spirit and the, and the letter of the law. Let the spirit prevail. These laws are not cast in stone. They are, they are, they are done so that the society enjoys tranquility and enjoys peace. Mm -hmm. So uh, let, us, let us have uh, Chebukati and, and his team call a dialogue session. Let all, every, every player come in and the state is stand. And let us have 
a, co a consensus and a way forward that is agreeable to all parties. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us uh, on our point of uh, politics. We've been speaking to Moses Oburu and Peter Ongonga, who are part of the NASA champions. We've also been speaking uh, to Ivan Sofula and uh, Professor Oweri Tumbo, both of whom are political analysts. This has been the political point. Taking a look at uh, that uh, NASA rally that uh, took place uh, this weekend. This is Morning Express. We take a short break now, but uh, do stay with us. Michael Gitonga and I will be back with the top stories making headlines this hour. Stay with us.